and I've bought a promise. That's what you do when you buy an apartment off the plan. You don't buy a property, you buy a promise. We're simply asking for the bare minimum and that is compliance. It's about consumer protection. Western Australia's capital has a problem. The love of a big block with a backyard for the kids is stretching Perth to its limits. We've got a city that's 150 kilometres long. We can't keep going. What are we going to have, Perth going all the way to Kununurra? One solution is enticing more people into apartment living. I was just really excited to start life in a brand new place with the kids. Perth mum Bethany Evans has bought an apartment off the plan. It's in the Shenton Quarter development, close to the CBD. The big one on the end. But two years after putting down her 100 grand deposit, it's still not clear when she'll be able to move in. We were first alerted to problems at Shenton Quarter in March. Our organiser was contacted, can you come down the site and have a look? Things just don't seem right here. He went down there and noticed large cracks within the slabs, cracks that you could fit a pen down. It was quite a red flag, but the developer did make lots of efforts to reassure us at that point. I did pay a lawyer to review my contract to see if I had any avenues to exit at that point, uh, and there weren't any. Work on the site continued until a few weeks ago when the construction union released this footage. All around the podium area. Welded by the rectification work. And the builder, BGC, walked off the job, citing an ongoing commercial dispute with the developer, Iris PW, regarding engineering and design. The remediation work that has to take place is, um, is just not acceptable. The developer has consistently denied any structural issues, telling 7.30 BGC's decision is deeply disappointing and that all aspects of the project have been thoroughly assessed and will be properly certified. All they have said to me is that their remedial works have gone well and that they will not settle on the property until the work is complete so that the property should be safe and sound by the time we get there. The concern then is there's no need for them to do that quickly and obviously the builder has decided not to continue work on the site, which raises bigger concerns for me that they have a view it can't be done. So where does that leave you? Uh, renting, I guess. I've moved house three times uh, just in this time that we're waiting on the Shenton Quarter development to finish. It does look like another move in the near future. Well, what this current dispute proves is that WA is not immune from these issues, that there are major issues occurring on building sites. Lawyer Bronwyn Weir co-authored a government commissioned report five years ago aimed at improving regulations and compliance in the building and construction industry, but progress has been slow. In WA, for example, they have the lightest touch regulatory regime, so it is completely left to the market in terms of how much independent oversight there is to the building approval process and the construction process. The scheme really operates on a basis of trusting developers and builders to produce quality product. Across Australia, new apartment buildings over three storeys are not automatically covered by government-backed insurance, so buyers can be left to foot expensive repair bills if defects emerge and then their builder goes bust. What are we supposed to do? Janice Dudley also bought an apartment at the beleaguered Shenton Quarter in 2019. She's living with a friend while the commercial dispute drags on. I think it's a, an example of the regulation trailing and not having caught up with changing buyer preferences. And at the same time, there's the government providing incentives for people to move into apartments and buy apartments in the interests of medium to high density, and yet those people don't have the same protections. Samantha Reese from Apartment Advocacy Australia has been lobbying the state government to introduce mandatory independent audits during construction. The mandated audit will look at the structural elements, so the steel and the concrete, the fire installation, waterproofing, and also windows and facades. It's those elements that if they are not done properly are critical and they are very costly to the apartment owners once we actually find those defects are present in a building. 
The WA Commerce Minister Sue Ellery told 7.30 a review of WA's building laws is underway and that mandatory inspections are being considered. Master Builders Australia says New South Wales is leading the way in consumer protection, including by appointing a building commissioner to clean up the industry. This type of work is simply unacceptable. What we think is important at the moment is not necessarily creating a tonne of more compliance, but rather actually having people on the ground to ensure that those doing the wrong thing are actually held to account. The Australian Property Council's WA director told 7.30 the council supports Bronwyn Weir's 2018 report, but that unnecessarily complex regulations will jeopardise housing supply. I find it really frustrating when I hear that we can't increase regulation or increase oversight to ensure better outcomes for consumers because that might slow things down. Because the alternative is a legacy of buildings in this new rush to increase housing supply that are going to leave a large percentage of owners with awful headaches for many years to come. The union wants more accountability placed on developers. They can't do any more work on it because they can't put any more weight there. They need to apply industry standards and start building to a high quality standard, not down to a price. Other than in New South Wales, you cannot pursue the developer if there are problems with an apartment, which is really a major gap in consumer protection. <laughs>